swapping thoughts. Why does Hollywood hate Lord of the Rings? They keep botching it. They keep screwing it up. They keep Tom Bombadil all over the place. They're doing it all wrong. Today, we're just going to belly flop right into that mess and see what it's all about. In this video, I'm going to be going over the visuals and CGI, the characters and acting, the plot and pacing, and the fans' reactions and expectations to this homunculus mess. Although, I'm pretty sure everyone already knows that this is going to be worse than a sack of taters. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Let's kick things off with the visuals. I will give credit where it's due. The CGI budget seems to be as large as Smaug's treasure hoard. But did anyone else notice how dark some of the scenes were? When I was watching the trailer for the first time, I had to max out my brightness on my screen, just like I'm going into hyperspace to meet Yoda. Also, those snakes, dude. What are those snakes doing there, bro? I have no idea what that was about. I felt like the snake's only purpose was to fulfill what the narrator was saying in that scene. The crest of him slit us in. I would say it's either that, or they're hinting that Sauron is actually from Hogwarts, and he was placed in Slytherin from the hat, which would make sense because of his dubious nature. The animation is also too clean, bro. Everything in Hollywood is too clean nowadays, man. I need the raw. I need it dirty. Give it to us. Raw and Look at Lord of the Rings and see that grit. See the grittiness on the screen. You don't have that anymore. The lighting, the three point lighting that's gone now. It's only like two lights now. I'm telling you guys they need to use more backlight. The characters are all blending into the scenes because they don't have a backlight. If you don't have the backlight, it just blends the characters into the, the environment and it's harder to see them. And it makes them look like they're invisible. They just look like a pack of chameleons, bro. I don't want no chameleons in this Lord of the Rings. I want the real thing. And the overuse of lens flare is insane. This is not a J.J. Abrams film. They shouldn't be using that. Let's move on to the characters and the acting of the show. I do want to say before I begin that the acting that an actor does in a film isn't all necessarily their fault. It is a little bit. The fault also lands on the director, the screenplay, and the overall environment of the set. With that being said, it still seems like Galadriel's stern look is the only look that she has. I just look back to the Galadriel from Fellowship of the Ring, and she comes across as very calm, soft-spoken, with a little smile, giving her almost an angelic kind of presence. The Rings of Power series kind of just makes her look like an aggressive, power-hungry feminist. But maybe Galadriel had a drastic change of personality over the years. But I really doubt that. I doubt she went from speaking like this to speaking like this. She might as well be starring in a commercial for better help. An Elrond, dude. I just feel bad for the guy. Every time he's on screen, he's just so wooden. I also fully believe with all my heart that he should not have been cast for Elrond in this series. My reason for this is because he looks a lot more like a young Boromir than an Elrond. Notice his wide jawline and box-shaped head. Elves are supposed to have long and skinny faces. I actually think that the actors that play Isildur and Elrond could swap places, and that'll make for a slightly better immersive experience going into this next season. I think the absolute biggest disappointment in this trailer as far as characters go is Sauron. They literally just slapped a wig on Halbrand and went out to Chick-fil-A. Halbrand was just an awful choice for a character anyway, and now they're stuck with this same actor that looks a lot more like the Targaryens from Game of Thrones than this fair form floozy. Now about the plot or whatever kind of a plot they're trying to tease in this trailer. We got mystical butterflies, slippery snakes, and this weird glob of goop stuff. And the eagles, bro. The eagles are featured in this trailer as well. That's gotta be a, <laughs> that's gotta be a bad choice right there. The only thing I can see them doing with the butterflies is just going like, speaking some sort of an incantation to summon them like they're an uber. The snakes, I'm guessing, would be one of Sauron's shape changes. If that's the case, then they're really leaning into the allegory that Sauron can be interpreted as Satan. Which I would be totally okay with if they did, because that is a great allegory. I love that one. The biggest problem I had with the eagles being shown in the trailer is that some guy just hops off the eagle like it's some sort of rinky-dink afternoon on a Wednesday night, coming back from an Uber Eats delivery. The eagles are meant to be used sparingly, according to Tolkien himself, because they are one of the most powerful beings in the universe, right up there with Gandalf, Sauron, and Saruman. So if they start using the eagles like it's some sort of common transport, like in Game of Thrones with the dragons, then there's going to be a problem with the populace. Time for the fans' reactions. You can tell what the fans think of this series by looking at the like-to-dislike ratio on the trailer. As of recording this, the trailer now has 99,000 likes to 547 dislikes. That's pretty insane. That's even worse than the Acolyte trailer, which is absolutely surprising to me. I believe the main reason for the amount of dislikes it got was because of the change of lore from Tolkien's universe to this one. It's completely different. It's a completely different show. Do you realize this? It's awful. Take this for example. 
That's basically like taking your little sister's favorite Barbie doll, taking off the arms and legs, and putting the legs where the arms should be, and the arms where the legs should be, and then giving it back to her. She's gonna cry. And that's exactly what all of these Lord of the Rings fans are suppressing right now. They're suppressing their tears, their emotions. They're suppressing it so much. And it kills me. I'm a longtime Lord of the Rings fan myself, and I feel it. I feel their pain. So there's my two cents on the Rings of Power Season 2 trailer. What did you think of the trailer? Let's get some thoughts swapped in the comments below. I've swapped my thoughts, and I'll see you in the next one.